So more and more things will be possible for Vega. So we are not kind of creating Vega for where the world is now. We're, we're, we're trying to get it to, you know, where we think the world will be in, in five, ten years time. What's up guys, today we're going to be talking Vega Protocol, an extremely ambitious project that's aiming to bring DeFi to the next level. We're going to give you all you need to know pre-ICO and in order to do that we've got David Siska, Vega's Head of Quantitative Research, to come and chat to us and paint a picture of exactly what it is Vega is going to be doing over the coming months and years. If you appreciate the work we're putting in and the content we're putting out, give us a like and subscribe. As a small channel it really helps us to get seen. Cheers and I hope you enjoy it. I'm here. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, th I thought you froze on my thing. It's all good. Um, so thanks for agreeing to basically do our job first, David, and explain to us exactly what Vega is. Um, when I first started looking at Vega and heard it was a decentralized exchange, I was thinking that the idea was to compete with Uniswap, PancakeSwap, and all the other DEXs, but that's not exactly what Vega's shooting for, right? No, no not exactly. I mean, there are there are certain similarities between some ideas in, in Uniswap and, and these other constant, constant product market exchanges uh, that are out there and, and that have proved to be extremely successful over the last two years. Uh, but uh, when we started you know, designing Vega, that was nearly, you know, in fact, more than three years ago now. And uh, our goal from the beginning was to design something that would appeal not only to the DeFi and crypto crowd, but actually something that, that could bring sort of traditional finance people over to the world of, uh, you know, decentralized finance. So, so to give them, give them the tools that they're familiar with and, and also the quality that they're used to. So, so one big difference between Uniswap and, and Vega is that we are running an entire order book on chain. And, and the reason we can do that is because we are, we are using our own blockchain based on proof of stake, based on the Tendermint protocol. We actually have the performance to run, to run the entire order book and, and many other things directly on chain. Uniswap, you can, you can view it as a compromise or as sort of the, the best trading experience you can provide on, on Ethereum with the speed that Ethereum or another proof of work network can give you. So um, at the moment, you know, Ethereum is developing and, and it, it will be faster, et cetera. But at the moment, it is simply not possible to run an order book on Ethereum. And, and this is one of the things that, that you do get with, with Vega, but it's not the only thing. The, the other thing is that we are from the very beginning, we were very concerned about fairness and, and front running and what would, you know, node and, and consensus operators be able to do at the expense of, of other users. So, for example, we've developed or Klaus, uh, our, our blockchain researcher, has, has developed a Vendi tree protocol, which basically ensures tra uh, trading fairness and prevents things like minor extractable value etc. So that's kind of one line of where we are very different from, from Uniswap. The, the other angle is that Uniswap, etc. They, they are spot exchanges in the sense that, you know, you want to buy Ethereum and you're paying with, say, USDC and, and you do swap, you know, and, and your wallet, you know, USDC goes out, Ethereum goes in, and that's the trade done, and it's over. They are actually... We are actually looking to disrupt the derivatives market, which in traditional finance is several orders of magnitude of the of the spot market. So on Vega, what you what you're trading are derivatives, and that's much more exciting because there is a trade life cycle. The moment you enter the trade, in fact, you 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 open a position, you basically make a promise that something can happen later, and then you know. If the market moves in your favor, you can close the position and, and take your profit. If the market starts moving against you, you have to keep the margin, but the exchange, you know, will, will keep your position open. And quite often, you know, the market turns around, as we've seen mm -hmm. in the last couple of no, days. Of course. <laughs> Things can look pretty bleak and then they turn around. So, yeah, but, but unlike Uniswap, uh, Vega is designed primarily for derivatives trading. So the end game here is to incentivize traditional finance people to move towards DeFi 
by providing traditional trading vehicles within crypto, which of course, I mean, this is a huge undertaking, uh, but one with potentially massive rewards. Lower fees are at the crux of this value proposition, but are there any other incentives that Vega provides over a traditional exchange? Yeah, so so very early when, when we started designing Vega, one of the people who had huge input was Tamlin, and she's a former derivatives trader. She, she used to trade power derivatives. And for her, the big thing was that actually the traders and the users can design and launch the market themselves. There is no middleman. They don't have to you know, have lengthy meetings with an exchange where they somehow then set things up for them and maybe not get it right. With, with, with Vega, any user can you know, design and propose a market and then you know, submit the market proposal as a blockchain transaction and then you know, the, the, the market will... You know, undergo a voting period by the community, then there will be you know opening auction that it will start trading and then it will settle. But it will be the market, you know, designed by the users. And and of course, part of you know getting the market launch would be to talk to other people who who might use it and other Vega token holders, so that when it comes to the vote, they understand what they're voting for and they're more inclined to vote in favor for. But for 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 us, this is one of the big innovations that you know anyone anyone can launch a market i mean in the, if, if you're used to things like uniswap it, it doesn't come as a big surprise but for traditional finance people this, this is quite mind-blowing you know that, that's mm -hmm. not how they're used to operating things in terms of the markets available on vega you guys are starting with derivatives as they're the more tricky ones to implement and introducing spot trading thereafter Will the platform be quite similar to what we see on a traditional trading platform with things like stocks, indices, options being available? Um, however, with the, the decentralized nature, any market that has demand for it can be created by the stakers of the governance token. Yeah, so that, absolute, that is absolutely one angle through which you, you can view it. We are expecting... Uh, you know, to, to have spot markets, of course, for a spot market, you need you need crypto native assets. So when, when you say trading stocks, it, it would be maybe, I, I don't know, you, you've seen Terra and, and their M assets, which basically mirror certain stocks that are traded, that are traded elsewhere. So once we have a spot market, you, you should be able to trade these mirror Terra assets as, as, as spot, but you wouldn't be trading that the the traditional stock of course if we you know put our look into the future goggles on and and think mm. that maybe you know stock ownership etc et will be on chain at some point eventually as well then it might be possible but but then we are really we are really talking far into the future but but another angle to to view vega through is that we really you know creating a protocol and, and in some sense an infrastructure layer. And what gets us quite excited is, is the idea that someone, you know, someone will use Vega to develop applications through which people can, you know, hedge their risks in quite straightforward way. And, and, and the people using this wouldn't even know that there is some kind of, you know, Vega or, or, or blockchain sitting behind it. You know, if, if you want to create a tool that's that's really useful to people you know you, you you would create a website with a simple interface provide just the bits that are useful for what you think people need you as the application provider may be the one who launches the market but the people actually using it they, they wouldn't see vega they would see your application and yeah. you know vega will be the blockchain that you know pe people really people really don't need to care about Clearly, community will have a major role in running Vega and ensuring its success. What steps steps are you taking to encourage community participation? Yeah, so for, for us, and, and I mean for all DeFi projects, you know, community is hugely important because of the way it is involved in governance. And they are the ones who basically provide the security of the network through, you know, delegating their tokens to trustworthy validators so, so 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 they're extremely important we've got some great people building out the community and and we're kind of you know we we, we started slowly we, we have a fairly active discord channel we, we've got a telegram group that's growing 
we've got a group of people who we are calling community core who are kind of that they've been with us for a while and and they're they're very enthusiastic about vega and, and we are very enthusiastic about them and they're really going into the details learning how learning how things work so that they can then sort of go out and 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 and, and help everyone you know to to get the most out of vega and of course what we are doing now in, in the in, in the coin list sale is, is part of the you know building out the community because finally we're we're getting to the point where you know vega tokens will have wide circulation and, and so we're getting more people interested and more people that's extremely important for us. I mean, for, for, for us it's absolutely key especially because you know we're we're making steps slowly but eventually we need to get to the point where we can actually open source you know exactly. open source Vega so, 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 so we're hoping that community will help you know not only creating market and being active in, in governance etc but they will also help us you know co-develop Vega in, in the direction in, in the direction that, that we you know that we now I'm speaking as community that whole, the community yeah, yeah, wants yeah, yeah. to take it with us and the, the other angle is of course you know if, if you open source your, your, your software anyone can fork it but kind of the DeFi thing is you can't fork community yeah. right and and, yeah. and and so if we have community you know and, and people trust each other and, and, and they have a similar vision then there will be no need to fork the software because you know everyone will be on the same page and, and working together. Yeah. yeah, we've got a huge amount of work to do, but one of the things that that we are will be able to bootstrap and 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 start developing further soon is kind of having tools for anyone being able to access you know the historical data, as you say, the tick by tick history. You, you you know from the blockchain, removing this barrier. You know if 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 the trading is happening on chain. And you have the tools to get the data. You don't have to pay Bloomberg or yeah. wh wh whoever Reuters for this data, and you don't have to view, you know, the prices with a fifteen-minute delay. I mean, you know, why should why should you be yeah. why should you not be able to see the exchange stock prices immediately? Why would you have to pay someone just just you know so that you don't get an artificial fifteen-minute delay? I mean, that's the, the traditional finance. There are all these layers on layers on layers where everyone takes a little cut, yeah. and and by the time. You know, the, the the average person gets to use something that, that, that there are spreads on spreads and fees on fees yeah. that, that that they end up paying for no particularly good reason quite often. And yeah. I guess to touch on spreads, so if I'm entering a swing trade, let's say on IG or plus five hundred or whatever platform, what they'll do is actually hedge against my bets by taking the opposite side of the trade and pocketing the fees. Um, in the case of Vega you have market makers or liquidity providers, I think basically two terms for the same thing. How do these market makers actually manage their risk on the platform? Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a great question because, because it brings us to the liquidity mechanism on Vega, which is quite different from what people are used to on something like Uniswap for, for the simple reason that our market is, is based on a limit order book and because it's a derivatives market so 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 absolutely the the liquidity providers who, who commit liquidity we've got uh, built-in protocols tools to make their life quite easy for example they don't have to post orders manually they just can specify in a transaction you know where they want their volume to be deployed relative to some pegs they can peg to best bid best ask they can peg to to mid whatever and and then these orders are you know automatically refreshed which is uh, which is important in a blockchain world, just in case you know you you, you can't re, you know you can't submit an order because there is a lot of traffic or something doesn't mean that the doesn't mean that the volume won't be there, but they absolutely need to have enough collateral to you know keep the margin for the positions that they entered and uh, also to keep the orders up, and and as you say, they will you know by by being market makers or liquidity providers they will have positions that they have to manage, which is different to if you provide liquidity on, on a you know, Uniswap pool, you, ju you just put your money there and you, know, you, you, you earn the fees and, and it's completely fire and forget. Whereas on Vega, you will have to manage your risk. And well, it's up to you how you do it finally. You, know, you, 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 might, you, you, you might do it on Vega, for example, by trading on another market that's you know, correlated and uh, 
because the cross margining system that we've developed is, is quite advanced you know you, you you can release excessive market you can release the system automatically releases excessive margin from mar one market and allocates it to another market as needed but fundamentally i i expect you know professional liquidity providers to hedge their exposure you know in the usual way so delta hedge across different exchanges you know maybe with spot may, may, maybe with maybe with other derivatives but um, they they will have to do it in a, in a in a competent way so so the liquidity mechanism that we have is not is not fire and forget and i guess one other important difference to note with the traditional dexes like uniswap is on Vega, there's no requirement for users to actually stake the native token in order to participate in, say, you know, IDOs or offerings. Uh, so, yeah, just something to keep in mind for people thinking of using it. That's right. So you, you don't need the Vega token to trade. You do need, I think, a little bit of the Vega token to propose a market. And then you might also want to have some to vote for your market because that just helps, you know, to, mm -hmm. to push it. But, but to just trade or, or to just provide liquidity on, the, on an existing market, you, you, you don't need the Vega token. And one nice thing as well for the holders of Vega token, the rewards that you get would be, you know, primarily the, the, the trading fees and the trading fees are collected in the settlement asset of whichever market you're trading on. So the Vega token, you know, imagine there is a market that settles in Ethereum, there is a market that settles in USDC, there is a market which settles in, you, you, you know, Bitcoin and, and a few other popular assets. If you're if you delegated your Vega tokens or if, if you're one of, if one of the validators, your income is not in Vega token, your, your, your income is in, in a basket of all these assets that trade on Vega and, 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 and you're, getting your, you, 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 you're getting your revenue stream that way. So, so, so in a sense, you, you, you're de-risked from, from you know, day-to-day -day fluctuations from, from the, of, of the Vega token. Yeah, you're diversifying for them. Yeah, yeah exactly. And you're saying you've been with the team for like uh, three years. Has the vast majority of the, the, the team been together for a while or have you been hiring a lot more recently or? Well, we, we've, been, we, we've been growing slowly initially because, you know, money was more scarce and, 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 and now we, we are hiring fairly aggressively. So I think for, for, for a long time, there were about 10, 12 of us and, and, and now we are at, at, at about 26, which is... Uh, you know, yeah, it's, 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 like it's, it's, more. it's not small, it's not yeah. small, and we've not managed to update the Vega team page before before announcing on CoinList, which, which is somewhat unfortunate, but there, yeah. are, there, there are more of us than, than what it says on the website now. I saw on the partnership section that you guys uh, actually had Coinbase as one of your early investors. Um, has been, how much has been backed by a NASDAQ List a company with long standing experience in the space been advantageous to you guys? Well, so in, in fact, Coinbase kindly agreed to invest, I think, sometime something like six months ago. So that was before they were listed. And, and in fact, our investor is what, what they're calling Coinbase Ventures, which I think is quite, you know, arm's length mm. from, uh, fr from Coinbase itself. So, so as far as I know, We've not had, you know, we, we, we've not had any input from Coinbase people as such, but but it's clear that you know they they think that you know DeFi and, and decentralized exchanges have, have got future, and, and for them this is this is one way of kind of you know hedging, hedging or, or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call it, right? <laughs> they should create a market themselves on Vega. <laughs> <On Bank. laughs> and it certainly well, I mean, it it bodes well for a major listing at some point, right? Well, it's uh, you know we, 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 we are a blockchain project, so 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 the listing is the, the listing is effectively now, right? That this is the oh, yeah. the, 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 this this is the listing. The, the, this is it. This is the big one. Yeah. Fair, fair, fair. Um, and were there any other partnerships that you were particularly excited about securing with Vega? So. We are. I I can't say that very much now because I I might. Uh, I, Get I yourself in trouble. Uh, on oh, you can, you, you can we, tell we your have, bros are brokenomics. <laughs> we, are, 
we, we are talking with, you know, we are talking with a number of people, but especially with Terra, we should have something pretty exciting to announce soon, but, but I can't say, I can't say anything more at this stage. Perfect. So I understand, David, there's token rewards for those using the Vega testnet over the coming week. Do you have any details on this? Yeah, so, so we've not announced anything specific yet, uh, but if you want to get yourself in a, in a good shape, you know, make sure you have a wallet, make sure you know how to place a trade, try to make a profit. It should be fairly easy because we, we, we are running some very stupid bots on, on testnet so if, if you can't if you can't make profit against them you know you, you, you're we're, definitely we're in trouble in the real world, world. <laughs> okay. if you can oh. make a profit against the bots that we have you know don't don't, don't go and, and start trading on a real exchange very confidently <laughs> just yet because they are they are very stupid but the, but the, the incentives on, on the testnet will be in form of you know for example trading game so so we will you know launch a market give people certain asset that they actually can't get an unlimited amount for and, and then we'll say right three days whoever makes the most you know wins and then the top three or the top five or, or top ten whatever will, will, will be getting some tokens so and if, if you want to do sort of prefer get yourself prepared then this is the kind of thing you, you should be thinking and we'll uh, we'll drop links for that in the description 100 percent. cool yeah definitely so thanks a million for that david uh Really, really appreciate you coming on. Um, great explanation of Vega. Pretty straightforward va a value proposition for quite a complicated uh, product in terms of its makeup and, and what goes into it. But I think the benefits are pretty clear and there to be seen by everyone. So thanks a million. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you for your time, guys. Cheers. Thank you much, David. So, yeah, thanks a million to David for coming on. I think we all had a much clearer picture of uh, exactly what it is Vega are trying to do after chatting to him. In terms of the tokenomics, we can see here the pie chart, 7.5% uh, available in the token sale, with large amounts being held back for team, community, and early investors. Uh, no foundation endowment tokens in this sale. If we look at the early investors, I had seen there was some confusion about exactly how much tokens the early backers were holding and what kind of effect this might have. So what I did was I worked backwards. Um, if we look at the total supply of 65 million tokens, 36.5% of the early investors. That's just under 24 million tokens. The seed investment round sold 15.2 million tokens. Uh, I got that by dividing 5.5 million by 0.36. And the strategic round, I did the same. That was 7.14 million tokens sold. So dividing 5.5 million by 0.77. This leaves us with 1.385 million tokens that are held by the early backers from August 2018. So I don't know what price they paid for them, but at least we know that, uh, that round and about just under 1.4 million tokens is what they're holding. So here we have the release schedule graph from Coinlist and you guys who watched previous videos know I'm not the biggest fan of this. So dug a bit deeper into it in the Telegram group and found out that initially 2 million tokens will be in supply or about 3% of the total amount. In six months, this goes up to 7.5 million tokens, uh, which is about 11%. In 12 months, it's 19 million tokens, or 29%. And then in two years' time, the vast majority will be available uh, at 60 million tokens. So with the model that Vega have, whereby anyone who holds or stakes these tokens can create a market, and via the reverse au auction process, they can uh, pocket the fees from the markets that they create, there should be, if this takes off an interest in lots of people hanging on to these tokens and using them to get a return on their money by creating these markets. So at the end of the day, it comes down to adoption. If the platform is popular and people are using it and people see the vision or share in Vegas vision, then a lot of these tokens won't actually be, you know, in circulation. They'll be held up and staked by people, although they can, strictly speaking, be considered part of the circulating supply. Um, one really encouraging thing about it was that the seed and strategic investors actually have a one month and two month longer lockup than the option three coinless sale, which I, I thought really uh, was something I hadn't seen before. Uh, maybe let me know if I'm wrong, guys, correct me in the comments, but that, that wasn't something I'd seen before. And the, um, yeah, just really encouraging and speaks to the long term thinking that these guys have of their project that they're just like, yeah, you guys buy it on coinless, come on, go ahead and trade it. Our seed and strategic investors are uh, happy or at least willing 
to hang on to their tokens for another month and two months. In terms of the coinless sale itself, uh, three options for 7.5% of the total amount of tokens. Option one, the cheapest at $5 per token, 12 month lockup, 12 month release period. Option two, $10 per token, six month lockup, six month release period. And option three, as we spoke about, freely trading after 90 days ahead of the street seed and strategic investors. Um, there are another uh, allocation of community tokens and also those for early supporters of the project that were available at I think $2. Uh, these are not coming out of the 7.5%. They're in, from the community section of the token distribution. So, I mean, this is you know a very personal choice in terms of which option you would decide to go for. Uh, it depends on how you value the project how you see it playing out long term, uh, you know, locking up tokens for a total of two years is, you know, obviously less control, I guess, over your, your money and price action than a 90 day trading lockup. But at the same time, the incentive is there in terms of uh, it's one third the price and also, you know, with uh, staking rewards and things like that. So, yeah, a decision, I think, certainly in terms of this one, everybody has to look at personally. Um, Having chatted to the guys in Vega, looked at the partnerships, looked at what they're doing, uh, and having traded myself, uh, swing traded and day traded for a few years, uh, you know, th there is a huge market here they're trying to tap into. And certainly, you know, when you look to the team and when you actually talk to the team, there's a huge amount of expertise and experience there as well. So, you know, if someone can pull it off, I do think these guys have the ability to do it. Um, and I don't think they're going anywhere. So, yeah, I personally, I'm, I, I would be happy enough with option one personally. Um, I, I see what they're trying to do here. I, I see and have experienced the problems in traditional trading platforms, not only in terms of uh, fees, but also in, in terms of information asymmetry. And that's something they're trying to solve. Uh, one other thing to touch on as well, just um, I didn't mention before. It's not required to hold or stake the Vega platform to or the Vega token to trade on their platform. Just if you want to create new markets, so you can go engage, use this platform without staking the token, which uh, I think is a big positive as well. Certainly in, in comparison to some of the other DEXs, where you know if if you want to participate in an IDO, you're holding their native token for a week, and God knows what'll happen in terms of price fluctuation. A week's a long time in crypto. So in terms of the team, just to quickly touch on them, I mean incredibly impressive repertoire here uh, Barney you know design trading platforms work for a consultant at the London Stock Exchange and having listened to some of the talks he's done on Vega has uh, a real quality in actually explaining some very complicated things in a relatively simple way Klaus designed the first practical protocols for asynchronous, or asynchronous ordering which uh, I don't know what it is but that sounds incredibly impressive uh, Ed also, you know, experience in building software for Fortune 500 companies. Tamlin Rudolph, who was a derivatives trader for a long period of time, uh, led a 10 billion hedge fund, um, you know, and established a 100 million prop trading fund. In David Siska, who we chatted to, head of quantitative research, you know, clearly a really smart guy, really nice guy too. Rebecca Simmons, 25 years of experience in technology and data marketing. Uh, Jeremy in engineering. Uh, expert in Ross C++, 10 years experience building distributed systems, and Ramsey Khoury, investor relations and business strategy at Vega, experienced entrepreneur. Uh, this is the team of eight. They've now expanded, uh, David, said, David said to us, to 26 people now, which doesn't sound huge, but I mean, that's, you know, 3x, uh, more than 3x the amount of people, which is on uh, the Coinless page. So they're, they're expanding pretty rapidly. Um, hopefully in order to deal with uh, a massive uh, influx of customers and business, right? So yeah, pretty fascinating project that as we can see here has an absolute plethora of um, partnerships involved in it. Uh, we tried to go the extra mile, especially with this one, and get it from the horse's mouth with David, who I think was super, and thanks again to him for coming on. Uh, if you guys want to go the extra mile for us and click the like button and subscribe, we'd really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, look forward to doing, to doing the next one and chat to you guys soon. Cheers.